Let me show you what this bad boy can do. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Titanium Man Garage. And today, I've got a new project. I believe this is a 97 Sportsman. And it's got a no spark issue. So now these older models, it's not all plug and play. It's got the your circuit board, looks what looks like a big rat's nest. Don't let that scare you. It's actually uh, not bad once you uh, once you're able to read what the board says, what everything plugs into. It's actually not that bad. In my past videos, I've always said if you got no spark or one spark, no spark, it's always the black wire to the CDI. Unplug that, and a lot of times you'll get spark. Then it'll let you know if it's your run stop kill switch coming down on the handlebars or if it's your CDI. So here's the CDI box right here. That was all plugged in right here. And as you can see, there's nothing plugged in there. That's uh, alternative ground. Um, your main ground bar is behind these wires all up here. Brown is plugged into it. I did that. I disconnected the black wire. Got no spark. Uh, I replaced the coil because my coil wasn't looking too good. That will uh, admit spark to your spark plug. So if you look here, I wasn't getting any ground here. I, I grabbed my uh, tester. So what I did was I moved everything over here. And then I've also got my grounds right here. Now that's factory. That they go uh, right to the rev limiter. Um, on other models, there's a bolt. Goes underneath the coil. I don't have it in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move these over to here and ground everything out over here underneath the coil. Because I think that's a better ground. I think Polaris started doing it this way, putting the ground wires right here. I don't like it because you're putting it on an aluminum plate and then it's screwing into the, the metal frame. So I want to make sure I got a good ground. I'm going to move that over there. And I started doing some tests and uh, there's actually a pretty good video this guy had gone through and uh, shows how to test stators, uh, your pulse coil. Uh, because that would be my next step. What I also did do is you've got your throttle safety kill switch. I disconnected that just to bypass any issues. So I have no power going to it at all. So that I can rule that out. I've ruled out the run stop kill switch. The CDI box I actually changed. I robbed it from another one. And then the coil I've actually put both coils in and tested them and both spark plug coils up here, they're good. So, that brings us down to the stator. Now, my first thought was, it was the pulse coil. So if you've never pulled your stator off, this is your pulse coil. When your flywheel spins around, actually, let me show you the flywheel. This is one really clean flywheel. There's a little plate that sticks out there, Just cast it into the flywheel. Every time that passes the pulse coil, right here, every time it passes it tells it when to spark. It'd be one or two things, either this is an adjusted right, or there's a short in the wire. I tested that with the ohm meter and I wasn't getting any reading on that. I did pull this cover off originally. And I did find a small break in the wire, but it was still making contact. And then I noticed this. If you can see that, looks like uh, looks like it's burnt. So I haven't been able to actually trace down what the issue is, if it's the stator or the pulse coil. So I'm going to replace the whole thing. Got a stator, pulse coil, everything came with the whole wiring harness. Bought this off of eBay. So yeah, that should do me good. It's for the right model. I'm gonna throw that in and see if I get spark. So the next time you see this thing, I'll have everything grounded at the coil instead of on the rev limiter. Um, I'm thinking right up here, I might find a way to ground this to the frame so I got a good ground. 
um, for the other uh, bl black wires that go to it instead of putting it in that uh, that side panel or I might just leave them there I don't know I, I could do both but I kind of like to leave everything original so I might try to ground that out and then I'll, I'll swap the stator out these three bolts come out and then this mounting plate to keep your wire down will come out and a screw here and a screw down here pulse coil will come out I actually have the, the stator plate loose so if the wire is tucked underneath there I can get to it and then disconnect all my wires and replace it alright here we go I got it disassembled um, I think I'm going to post a video of it uh, being assembled there's actually a ground wire that goes behind uh, this thing actually looks kind of fried uh, if you look through here, I'm going to hold up the light. That's all barbecued. It's all melted here. Yeah, it looks like something got hot. And uh, there was a split in the wire. Uh, you won't be able to see it in the camera, but right there where my thumbnail is, right here. So I, I'm hoping replacing this will, will do the trick. Okay, here we go. So when I disassemble it, there's a ground screw that goes here. On the new stator, this wire is really long. I should really cut it and bring it down, but I don't have an end like that. So I think I'm gonna just try to tuck it out of the way and hope it works. I like the hand start the threads, not that I strip something out. If I don't like the way this looks, I might end up cutting it. I'll have to go to the hardware store and uh, replace it, but... It's tight. And just remember where that... Uh, where that gets positioned, so you put it back in the right spot. And then all this will land up right. So right now I'm just gonna snug one of the bolts up just so I can make sure I got everything else lined up before I tighten everything down. I might get caught in the flywheel, but... So yeah, if you uh, get an aftermarket stator, uh, you might have to cut that shorter. Uh, I'm not gonna do that right now, so for video purposes, I'm just gonna show you how to assemble this, and uh, I'll probably end up cutting that shorter and getting that to fit. I got that loose. It's not tight, tight. I'm gonna run plate in here. I want to try to do this without pinching the wires. So leave it loose, reposition your wire where it should be. Alright, so I'm going to tuck that in last, so the next thing I'm going to do is put the pulse coil on, make sure you got it on the right direction. Alright there, hopefully you guys got a little better view. With this aftermarket, there's uh, the wires are a little longer, so I had to tuck this behind here. I'm actually going to take this plate back off and tuck these in really nice. Put the plate on because this little tab's in the way. But uh, I'm going to tighten these down and then There'll be an adjustment later on. And there you have it. So I'm going to pull that plate off, tuck these wires in nice. I'll throw the flywheel back on. Alright guys, I got everything back together. 
and I hooked up the spark plug, put a new plug in, and I got a spark. Then I threw the spark plug back in the engine and it wouldn't fire. So I'm getting a one spark, no spark condition. So I got multiple issues. There you go, one spark, no spark. So the stator was bad. And that brings me back to the CDI. It's either the CDI is bad or the kill switch. So I'm gonna replace the CDI box because that's usually the common cause of one spark, no spark. I'm gonna try one other trick. I'm gonna follow the black wire up and disconnect it because if it is the kill switch, that should bypass it. Let's see what happens. If you're gas leaking, it's because I'm uh, draining the tank right now. There we go. Disconnect the black wire, and she fires. So that tells me one of two things, the CDI box or the, the kill switch. I'm thinking it's the CDI box, but I haven't started this thing yet, so I'm gonna put that plug back in and see how she fires. There you guys go. She runs like crap. Hasn't been running over a year and a half. I disconnected the uh, black wire for the CDI. Smoking a little bit. Timing needs to get adjusted. Blowing white smoke. Either timing or we got a head gasket issue. So or just got old crap in the exhaust. She's running rich. But there you have it. Alright, I had to shut her down. Did I thumb the throttle a little bit? The throttle cable stuck. I'm gonna probably have to replace the throttle cable. Um, or it's possibly the choke cable that uh, was uh, not adjusted properly. So the guy had put in an aftermarket carb, which I'm thinking is the culprit. Just because it's blowing white smoke doesn't necessarily mean it's a head gasket leak, like you saw earlier, it's blowing white smoke out. I'm thinking the guy has this carburetor adjusted wrong, uh, it runs like crap. You know, if I uh, close the uh, choke, it dies. If I keep her wide open, she runs but races. So I got multiple issues. I gotta adjust the uh, throttle cable, I gotta adjust the choke cable, possibly replace the throttle cable. I do have another carb I might try. I might just throw that in there because this has been sitting for a while, so who knows it's uh, stuck in it. Might need a good cleaning. And I got a parts machine out back. I do have another CDI. I'm gonna give that a shot and hopefully that solves my issues but uh, I'm actually going to I'm actually going to pull the spark plug and I want to see if it's black my gut tells me it's going to be black if it's black it means the cardboard is running rich and it's not cool and blowing out of there if uh, it's wet and white or if it smells like coolant then I got a head gasket leak does look like this has some work done to it. I'm looking at the gaskets, and uh, I mean, this engine's pretty clean. So I don't know if the guy ripped it apart, rebuilt it, or if it's the original engine, it's only got 1,500 miles on it, which I'm hoping it's the original. I'll have to do a timing adjustment, check the, uh, just check the head. If you want to get rid of your uh, no spark issue, oh, that's just my little jump pack here beeping. Whew, it stinks in here. It smells like uh, oil and gas burn. So you want to get rid of your no spark, one spark, or absolutely no spark. That's how you replace a stator. And I will be repl replacing the CDI and checking the kill switch because uh, it's either one of the two. I disconnected it and just to let you guys know, if you do disconnect the black wire going onto the CDI, sometimes it will not shut off. So, just so you know. 
All right, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I gotta get out of this garage, it stinks in here. <laughs> um, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, like always, till next time.